Hey, it's Aaron, and today we're going to continue my How Does Anarcho-Communism Work series, and today we're going to talk a little bit about workplace democracy. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So earlier you said that all workers in a factory would own part of that factory, but if everyone at the company owns the business, then does that mean that everybody is the boss? And if so, how does anything get done? Don't you need some sort of leadership to have a business actually function? And if not leadership, then who directs the workers? Well, it's a misconception to believe that we always need leadership roles to tell us what to do. Though some people do at times require supervision or guidance when they do work, you'll notice that people who often take pride in their work or enjoy their job will usually take the initiative and do that job very well without someone having to tell them that if they have time to lean, they have time to clean. But if the question is, how do we organize the workforce and what if we actually do need leadership positions, the answer is simple, workplace democracy. Workplace democracy is an idea based around the concept of worker self-management, a classic concept where instead of having a top-down hierarchy with a boss or a CEO or a manager telling you what to do, you would actually have a vote in what you do and work with the rest of your co-workers to determine what to produce, when to produce, how to produce, and what to do with the profits. If the business is small enough, you could collectively work together to arrange schedules and set up meetings, organize what time co-workers should show up, and so on. And on a larger scale, if the work of organization or management becomes a full-time job, then the workers can vote to elect a manager or a labor coordinator to delegate those tasks. In nature, natural leadership roles do occasionally show up, and it's not against anarchism to allow those certain leadership roles to take a position where they are useful. If you happen to know a little bit more about mechanics than your neighbor and his car breaks down, you would naturally fill a leadership role in teaching that person how to fix their car. But those leadership roles are often temporary, and there's no reason why we need to have the same person that knows how to fix the car be the same person that runs the society or the business or the organization. And it makes very little sense to operate in a business where you have absolutely zero say in what happens to the product of your labor. It makes even less sense that you would do all of that work and have someone else actually gain the profit. With this in mind, the idea of voting for your boss seems like an extremely favorable solution. No longer would you have to deal with a supervisor that doesn't understand the job that he's supervising, or management who make decisions that hinder progress. How many times have you come up with a revolutionary idea at work and had your boss shoot it down because it didn't go through the proper channels, or maybe you made him look stupid? Those positions could actually be filled by competent workers who are voted in democratically by all of their peers. We can even set up councils to make decisions on behalf of the company that reflect the views of the employees. And honestly, who better to make those decisions about a corporation than the people who know that corporation best? The people who have to work and essentially live at that corporation every day. Hmm, you know, this sounds a lot like a worker co-op, and if you really like worker co-ops that much, why don't you just start one? Under capitalism, there's no reason why you can't. Well, to a point that is true, but let's look at the reality here. For the most part, regular people don't even know what a worker cooperative even is. You aren't taught about it in school, and if you are, it's a really short class. And even if there are successful worker cooperatives, they're rarely spoken about. For example, did you know that the cranberry juice producer Ocean Spray is a cooperative? It's one of the largest producers of cranberry juice in the United States, and yet we never hear about how it functions. Or what about the Mondragon Corporation in Spain? It's the 10th largest company, and yet you've probably never heard of them. I'm sure that if more people knew what a worker cooperative was, they would be much more willing to join one. On average, a worker cooperative can even pay a worker a much higher wage than a regular capitalist business, because none of the money is being funneled to the top and given to pay the CEO. As an extreme example, if the Amazon Corporation was a worker cooperative, each employee would be a multi-millionaire. Instead, they're being paid around minimum wage. 
Also, this system just doesn't encourage the startup of worker cooperatives like it does with large capitalist businesses. So-called too-big-to-fail industries are given bailouts to the tune of billions of dollars, while a small community of workers would struggle to get even a tiny loan to start a worker cooperative. If workers interested in starting a worker cooperative were given a 0% interest business loan to start that cooperative, just like the big banks and GM were given when they tanked the economy in 2008, you would probably see a massive number of cooperatives today. Hang on, so all of the businesses in an anarchist society are worker cooperatives? Not exactly. A worker cooperative is a neat idea, but it's like a baby or a puppy in comparison to what an actual anarchist business would look like. They're constantly slipping on the floor and falling down. Worker cooperatives under a capitalist system still must adhere to all of the rules and regulations of that system. It will still have to deal with economic recessions, price gouging, labor shortages, and every other problem that the capitalist economy has created. Anarchists don't want worker cooperatives exclusively. We want the worker control and ownership of the means of production and worker cooperatives are a convenient way to get there. Setting up a worker cooperative sector under capitalism is a great way to build a dual power structure in the area of production, but it's still extremely limited. Businesses in a system where the workers actually own the means of production operate in the same sort of democratic fashion, but they're not restricted by the inherent contradictions created by capitalism. They wouldn't be forced to violently compete with one another in a market system, but would rather be encouraged to cooperate with each other to build the best product available. Obviously, some sporting competition can be involved, like trying to produce that product a little bit faster or a little bit better than the competition. But the point at the end of the day isn't to individually profit. The point is to benefit all of humanity, and therefore we would all profit. Small business owners wouldn't be limited by the amount of money they had to create some amazing service or revolutionary gadget, and rich capitalists wouldn't be able to start useless vanity projects to inflate their egos just because they have enough money to do so. Obviously, the entrepreneur or the inventor would be limited by the resources that the community is able or willing to provide, but again, these factors can be worked out democratically. Worker democracy gives the employee back their autonomy. It gives them back the pride that they can feel in actually building or creating something. And in essence, still being able to own the product of their labor. And we all know that when you own something, you're much more likely to take care of it than if you don't. People that own their own house or own their own business are much more likely to work harder at keeping up that business or keeping up that house than people that simply work there to get a paycheck all of the workers would be able to come together and determine their own destiny instead of some CEO or bureaucrat a hundred miles away on a beach drinking a margarita, making all of the decisions for your life and profiting off of your work. Those decisions can be made on your own. At least, that's the way I look at it. If you do get a chance, please check out all of the links in the description box below. Hit that little bell button because you know they are not going to tell you when I release a new video. And make sure you're subscribed because they are literally unsubscribing people every single day. They unsubscribed my mother the other day. Unbelievable. And uh, also, definitely check out my Patreon. Every dollar does help fund this show. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching.